Imran Khan's talk was creating a potential for Pakistan to be liberated from the relationship of dependency that it has on the Gulf states and that his ousting brought Pakistani back on dependency. The reason why I start with all that is not to celebrate Imran Khan, but to highlight why the current Pakistani government might consider normalization of ties with Israel if Saudi does it. Remember, when UAE normalized with Israel, mm. they brought Bahrain as a gift and they brought Morocco as a gift and they brought Sudan as a gift to the Israelis to say to the Israelis, look, I'm bringing all these people. If Saudi Arabia normalizes, it will want to bring the country whose people are most likely to riot about the idea of the land of the two holy most normalizing ties with Israel. The reason the current Pakistani government might do so is because where Imran Khan was pursuing alternative alliances that might be able to wean Pakistan's dependency on these states that no longer consider Muslim issues to be of importance, on these states that are prioritizing India over Pakistan, that are prioritizing Israel over Palestine, this government appeals wholeheartedly about upholding that relationship of dependency, going to Saudis and pleading for billions of money, going to the Saudis and giving off Pakistani assets to the UAE and the Qataris, mm. selling Pakistan for the sole reason of staying in power and essentially going along and aligning Pakistani foreign policy with the very powers that Imran Khan refused to align Pakistan with. So, for example, when, when Imran Khan refused to get involved in the Ukraine war, there are reports that Pakistani weapons have gone to Ukraine in ceding to the US. When Imran Khan, for example, contemplated going to the Kuala Lumpur summit, Pakistan's relations with Turkey and Malaysia are no longer the same as Imran Khan's relations were with Turkey and Malaysia that had the potential to transform the Muslim Ummah and the like. Mm. The point here being is that I think that for this current Pakistani leadership, I think the Muslim causes are less of an importance to them right. than it was to Imran Khan. Right. If you think that Imran Khan paid the political price in foreign policy for taking these stances and still kept doing it, it shows that this current government, which is not doing the speeches that Imran Khan gave, mm. believe that these Muslim causes are not worth the political price that Imran Khan paid. Which suggests that the Pakistanis might say that if Saudi is doing it, if Khadim al Haramain al Sharifain, if Saudi, uh, one of the things that was quite fascinating is, um, and I hope I don't forget the point, but, but the point is that uh, when Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman went to India for the G20 summit, he didn't stop in Pakistan. Mm. Usually when Saudis go to deal with India, right. they throw something to Pakistan to say, we're still with you. This time mm. bin Salman didn't even bother. It's true the month before Khalid bin Salman met with Pakistani generals or the like, but, and, and promised money, which hasn't come yet. But bin Salman went to Saudi Arabia. When he went to Saudi Arabia, there was a very unusual trend where people were saying that bin Salman hasn't stopped in Islamabad because his heart is broken at what Pakistan... <laughs> His heart is broken at what the Pakistani establishment is doing to Imran Khan. Hmm. And I think it shows how Pakistanis still view Saudi Arabia hmm. in that they don't see bin Salman's de-Islamization of Saudi Arabia. They don't want to believe that bin Salman might normalize ties with Israel. They don't want to believe that, Khad, that the Saudis, you know, the land of Islam, and the Pakistanis love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. One of the things that I found fascinating was that I went to Konya in Turkey, and I asked the tour groups. We were looking for partnerships as part of I, I, me and my wife. We run Halal Travel Guide. We we're looking for partners to help us with our groups. But mm. and we were saying, who, where do the customers come from? She says it's overwhelmingly Pakistani. I said, well, has it always been like this? She said, no, since 2019, since. Mm. Erturul and these, their right. affinity for Islam is such that they were visiting every place that they saw on those shows. Right. They love the deen, they love Islam, and they don't want to believe that bin Salman is trying to de-Islamize Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And this was an example, the idea that bin Salman will go to India because his heart is broken about what Imran Khan did, which is completely opposite. The Saudis celebrated that Imran Khan went. Yes. I, I think that the Pakistanis will say, and going back to the point, the reason why I mention it is to give context, that if Saudi Arabia did it, there must be something halal in it. Mm. If bin Salman did it, if the land of you know these mashayikh, you know that we love and celebrate and the like, did it, then why is it haram for Pakistan to do it? Maybe there's something because they understand Islam better than us. I'm, just, I'm not saying this is what Pakistanis say. I'm saying what people might argue right. that maybe I, and therefore we should go along with them or the like. But the last point that's worth noting is that the Pakistani government may be concerned at a potential backlash. But the Pakistani government as it stands, when you think that at this moment in time, they are pulling all the stops and mobilizing all the institutions and, and bringing out all these confessions on live television, Osman Dar and these others and the like, 
to denounce Imran Khan and trying to prevent Imran Khan from running in elections in PTI and the like because they're worried that they might replicate the landslide victories in Punjab or the like. Mm. It appears that the, the government believes that it has the means through which to suppress the people and suppress any backlash. Yeah. They'll be thinking if we can do it to Imran Khan, if we can prevent Imran Khan from running in elections and politically engineer a result, we can handle any backlash with regards to normalization of ties with Israel and the like. Mm. I think Saudi Arabia is contemplating bringing Pakistan as a gift. But I still think when you look at the way that the Pakistani establishment is still struggling to indict Imran Khan mm. on any of the 200 plus charges that have done Imran Khan, it suggests that the establishment are still facing stumbling blocks. And the only stumbling block they have in reality is public opinion, mm. which suggests that Pakistani public opinion still matters. Yeah.